Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on and today we're going to be taking a look at Puss for the Nintendo Switch. And if you were drawn in exactly like I was by the pseudo cute kind of freaky vaporwave graphics, you may be really happy that you sticked around for this review before you dove into the game. Puss is cute and it's adorable and especially for the actual screen cover image on the Switch, it looks like something that anyone would enjoy, probably borderline on a party style game. I mean, maybe you'd play around as a little bubbly cat head through a maze, throwing hairballs at your friends. But no, this game is completely the opposite. And even though you can actually choose to play as one of about 40 different little cutesy cat heads, that little visual player bonus doesn't really take out that much of the sting of the pure unadulterated raw mechanical difficulty of this maze-like puzzle game. Oddly enough though, we do get a tantalizing story. As soon as you plug in Puss to your game console, we get a full-on video introduction where a fluffy little Kittles is staring at the static on a TV when it reaches out to him for help. And as any good cat would do, it immediately abandons its owner and dives right into the screen. And this is how we are introduced to some of the most intensely epic puzzling challenge I've seen for a maze game in no other maze game. I have never actually played a game based around mazes that is this difficult. But at the same time, the visual and audio package just, just really sucks you in wanting to know what the heck is going on and where it could possibly go from there. Overall though, as you might expect from a game based around maze puzzles, it is pretty simple. Other than the pause button or maybe changing some settings, really all you get to play the game is the left thumbstick. You'll be navigating in and out of traps and through mazes, which as soon as you get past the introductory level have all sorts of different movement mechanics and even timers and buttons. And pretty much the only rule of the game, like old school operation, is just don't touch the sides. But of course with no access to a D-pad, having to use a roughly programmed analog joystick, going in a straight line through these super tight right angle curves of the game, having to account for motion and bending and twisting of the maze itself, well that is no easy task for any player regardless of skill level. Not only that, the game isn't randomized like you would think of a random dungeon crawler with level design changing every time you enter, but within the game's several challenge areas to gain keys to unlock the final gate. Every single one of the levels that you play is randomized almost like randomly pulling out of a grab bag to see which maze puzzle you'll be playing through. And in that sense, while you might actually get a chance to practice some of the more difficult puzzles just by random chance, Certain runs through the game might give you a slew of easy puzzles all the way up to the boss or get you all the way to the boss only to run into that one death-defying puzzle that you've never actually encountered and sponge up all of your extra lives. On that note, the game does have a life system even though it doesn't really have a checkpoint system. Certain puzzles will actually have checkpoints though. But as far as the progression from stage one all the way up to the final boss room, there are really no checkpoints. So if you end up getting a game over because you've used all your lives, you're starting over at area one. And as you might guess, that's going to give you a lot of practice for all of the randomized mazes. And the more you practice, the higher the score you might get in each maze, and the higher your score, the more extra lives you can earn. And so while Puss overall does seem incredibly punishing for such a challenging, weird, cutesy, sort of horror style game. The more you commit to it, the more you stick with it, and the more you just punish yourself to keep playing, the more of a reward you actually get in the form of extra lives. Looking at Puss visually though, like I already said, it drew me in immediately. I saw Vaporwave and I was like, this looks awesome. And within moments of playing the game, I immediately started connecting it to other games like Infinity. I was like, this is, this is Infinity with cats. Though I've got to say, out of the two games, I probably prefer Puss. But moving on from that potential rabbit trail, visually, Vaporwave graphics, they're beautiful, they're cute, they're weird, they're bizarre, they keep you tantalized with the game, but they also throw in a good mix of incredibly bizarre, pit of hell kind of horror. Every once in a while, when you get into a game and you start losing lives, you'll get flashes of the dark side of the internet. And if you grew up when the internet was a baby, you might be slightly reminiscent of going through the random Tumblr on 4chan. You never know what you're gonna get, but you'll probably always regret it. But even then, for some reason, we always keep coming back for more. 
The audio package of Puss is just as good and bizarre as the graphics, with everything ranging from pseudo-symphonic to just really, really freaking weird. And so in that sense, it is absolutely perfectly matched to its other presentation package. But as you might expect from a game that is both as difficult and bizarre as Puss is, there are a few considerations that a player might want to be aware of before they dive into the game. And first and foremost is the difficulty level. Puss is flippin' difficult. There's no way around it. There's really no way to kind of fudge that one. And so if you're looking at the game for a more kind of ephemeral, dreamlike experience, you're probably not gonna get it. What you're gonna get is a bit of a rage machine with some trippy graphics. And so if you are a hardcore challenge gamer that's always pushing to try and find their personal best and does not care how many times they die, Post might be exactly the type of game you're looking for. It is rage inducing and sometimes it even feels a little bit cheap. But if you want to see what happens when you get those keys from those areas and actually get to the end of the game, it's gonna take a lot of personal motivation, drive, and dedication to get to the end of the game, so be ready for that. The second consideration is that the graphics aren't always cute. As a matter of fact, some of them were quite disturbing. And so if you're not ready for staticky, seizure-inducing horror images like the beginning of The Ring, then maybe this wouldn't exactly be the game for you. And the final consideration would probably be just the game's general format. It's, it's a maze puzzle game, and there's really nothing else to it other than that. Well, that is other than the incredibly trippy boss fights. And so if you are looking for something that's way out of the ordinary, something that's going to push you to your limits, but you're not a fan of solving mazes, well, again, there might be other games out there that are better suited. But overall, taking a step back and looking at Puss as a total experience, in all honesty, and maybe it's just me personally as a gamer, it is way too bizarre to not at least try. Even if you don't like the experience, it's an experience. It's like when a friend asks you to try Sea Urchin for the first time. Nobody likes it, but maybe, just maybe, the next time you try it, you'll actually kind of have developed a little bit of a taste for it. But anyway, that does about wrap up the review of Puss now on the Nintendo Switch. So if you enjoyed the review, or especially if you found it helpful, feel free to throw us a comment or a like to show your support. And don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. Because as you can easily tell from this one, there are new and unique indie games coming out literally every single day. And so whether you think games like this are an easy hard pass, or maybe you consider them to be an unforgettable gem, chances are if it's on the Switch, you're going to find out about it right here. But anyway, this has been the Budget Gamer, so as always, thanks for watching.